Party people, it's Angie from Finance at Cirrus Aircraft, and I'm here today on my lunch hour working on my instrument rating. Because at Cirrus Aircraft, learning is a lifestyle. Let's start the show. Yes, that was Angie from the accounting department here at Cirrus, taking care of our 401ks, shooting instrument approaches on her lunch break. I love it. And look at this, we're back. Cirrus Aircraft Flight Fix is back. And by popular demand, in fact, you know, we kind of reviewed some of the previous Flight Fix episodes. And certainly one of the themes that permeated throughout was the stabilized approach, which is exactly the thing we should always be talking about as pilots, so I love it. But a great way to kind of get back into Flight Fix and cap off that previous discussion is what to do should you ever have an approach destabilized? Well, everybody has approaches destabilized. It's time to discuss when would you go around and more specifically, what things do you do to make a go around smooth and predictable every single time you do them. So that sounds like a great way to get back into things. So welcome back. Here's your flight fix. Cue the new title screen. Welcome back to the Cirrus Approach Flight Fix, the bite-sized flight training show dedicated to those pilots who never stop learning. Feels good to say it again. Sure, we've been gone for a little while, but that's just because the Cirrus training team was busy harvesting all their flight genius berries to get more content put together for you dedicated flight fixers. So it's time to get the Cirrus genius juice flowing. Here's the deal. I've always told my students, every approach that you ever do should be flown with the assumption that you're just gonna go around like it's a regular thing because the bottom line is that you never wanna fly in a way that a go around would ever become an unwanted surprise during your approach. You practice them so that when, when it comes time to execute them, they feel as normal and predictable as say, you know, a normal takeoff. There's no flinching or adrenaline or guessing. You just do it because you practiced it. The skill of knowing when and how to go around is one of those first procedural skills that's developed when anyone's learning to fly. So in this episode, I wanna answer those two questions. When should you typically go around? And once that decision is made, how, procedurally speaking, like from the Cirrus FOM, how do you smoothly and safely execute a go around? As usual, we're gonna hash this out in the revamped fake hangar in our pretend little training world we call Knott'sville. Let's go do it. Pilots are, well, they're a unique bunch. That's right. Flying your chair. As a generalized personality profile, I guess you could say that pilots share a need for certainly adventure, sure, but also a heightened need to succeed and execute the proverbial mission. That second part is what can make the go-around conversation so difficult sometimes, especially when you're in the cockpit and it's time to go. It's convincing people to treat a go-around as a successful part of any flight and well-balanced breakfast and not an unwanted failure because it isn't. Anything can cause a go around to any sort of pilot and so they should feel like a common everyday sort of thing because really they are. So with our egos checked at the door for a moment, let's answer the first part of the two-part question. First, during an approach, when and for what reason would maybe a pilot normally need to go around? Now, the simple answer to that one is you go around pretty much any time and for any reason that you as the pilot would deem necessary. But to begin kind of helping you dial in the potential when to go around scenarios just a little bit better, think of it this way, categorize it in your head this way. Plan to go around for anything that either one, would destabilize your otherwise stable approach, and two, anything that would be considered some external factor that's beyond your control that would otherwise interrupt your ability to approach and touch down safely on the runway. So let's go to number one. Remember, according to the Cirrus Aircraft Flight Operations Manual, once you're below 500 feet AGL, you need to maintain a stabilized approach all the way down through touchdown. Now, in the normal course of any approach, it's expected that at some point you're gonna need to make minor corrections to just maintain that stabilized approach. We all have to do that, it's not a big deal. What you're on the lookout for, however, are any moments when you're below 500 feet AGL that would ever cause you to need to make 
an actual correction or a very distinct maneuver to return to or reestablish a stabilized approach or heck additionally any time during that approach that you sense that something's happening that's going to jeopardize your ability to land within the first third of the runway, when that might be in doubt, when there's potential for you exposing yourself to the chance of a long landing or maybe a runway overrun. In any of those cases, when you're feeling destabilized, it's time to go around. And of course, many times an approach destabilizes simply due to pilot technique or error. You know, little slip ups. Again, not a big deal. Just go try it again. But think that you could also destabilize due to things like weather, perhaps issues with visibility, especially if you're shooting an instrument approach in that case. But for most flyers, turbulence and wind can very quickly destabilize an otherwise fantastic approach. Sometimes, you know, it's just luck of the, or unluck of the draw and it just kind of happens, especially in times of wind shear or wake turbulence encounters. In fact, if you ever hear wind shear or wake turbulence advisories from air traffic control. There's one Charlie Romeo Knoxville Tower, wind 23015, runway 23 left, clear to land, caution wake turbulence. Roger, clear to land, 23 left and uh, copy on the wake turbulence, 601 Charlie Romeo. Well, at that point, expect that the chance of a go around has probably just increased very significantly. Now. Think of category number two, the external factors that are relatively outside of your control. Well, they're a little more challenging to anticipate. Could be a myriad of reasons. For instance, no kidding, a couple of years ago when we were filming the Cirrus Approach takeoffs and landings course, available right now for purchase at CirrusApproach.com, it's incredible, trust me. I was on short final at Jackson County Airport in North Carolina, maybe just about 200 yards or so from the approach end, and I kid you not, a deer ran right out onto the runway in front of the airplane. True story. Now, unfortunately, we weren't filming on this one, but with the help of our Cirrus Media Graphics guys, I bet they could help me kind of show what it looked like. Yep. No, it was it was bigger than that. A little bigger, a little bigger. I think it had like antlers or red eyes or sharp teeth or something. Yes, that's it. That was the guy. Well, needless to say, that rabid hoofed forest beast caught my attention and caused an obvious last second go around. But I felt ready is the point. I was ready to go. And you know, as we went, I was like, ah, and he like jumped, and, ah, he, he almost got me. But don't worry, we were in an SR-22T, so we totally made an escape, no big deal. The go around went great. And similar last second external factors beyond your control could require similar go around actions. A good example would be maybe an aircraft on the runway. That is a thing that occasionally happens, or Maybe ATC just doesn't like the spacing, so they actually instruct you to go around. And when my kids were younger, it happened more than once on short final that all of a sudden a kid started screaming or crying because their ears hurt because, because dad wasn't doing that great of a job and we descended a little bit too quickly into the airport. The response was I had to do a go around, sometimes a very low go around where I climbed back up to a couple thousand feet fix the kids' ears a little bit, apologize profusely to them and my wife, then return for a peaceful landing and ultimately a peaceful car ride home. Bottom line, there's a ton of reasons why you'll have to do a go around at some point. So keep an open mind for all the most likely reasons so you always feel ready to go. If you're a new pilot and you haven't had to execute a real world go around yet, I guarantee someday it'll happen. So be ready. If you're an experienced pilot, well at this point I'm sure you're leaning back in your chair, rolling your eyes at me as you recount the numerous times and for numerous reasons that you had to go around in your flying career. In either case, as a review, when it comes time to go around in your Cirrus, react and then execute in this very standardized, repeatable way. You can break it down as a four-part flow when you're thinking about how to actually execute a go around. That is, power up, pitch up, clean up, and call up. When you've got to go, immediately but smoothly apply full power as your power up step, then with a connected right foot on the rudder because remember, at that point, you'll be experiencing significant left turning tendencies. Then as that power is applied onto the pitch up phase, smoothly begin pitching up to arrest your descent to an initial level attitude. Begin accelerating, then finish that pitch up at a normal go around climb attitude. 
If the Cirrus that I'm flying has a toga button, and they usually do, I always press that toga button so that I'm greeted with immediate go around pitch guidance as we get going. Because for most people, one of the main challenges of going around and making it smooth and predictable, especially as you're learning, is the significant change in power. Sure, there's a big power change, but also it's the relatively rapid change in aircraft deck angle from the nose low angle that you've kind of been used to for a while on the approach, then to a pretty quick, relatively nose high pitch attitude for the go around. That sort of transition can be a little bit jarring the first few times you do it, or if you haven't done it in a while. So anything that you can do to get yourself immediate visual pitch guidance is a great thing. So power up, pitch up, and next comes clean up. In pretty rapid succession to that pitch up action, retract flaps to 50% to shed what is at that point primarily unwanted drag coming from that 100% flat position. Once you're established and comfortable at that initial go around attitude, well then smoothly transition, just make little tweaks to get yourself to a pitch attitude that will hold VX or VY right there in your airspeed tape. Now pro tip, as you're doing that, simply look for the same pitch attitude that you're used to during any takeoff. Finally, when you've verified a steady, positive rate of climb, all obstacles are cleared, and you're above your flap retract speed, finish your cleanup by retracting flaps to zero. And there you go. You've arrived at the fourth step in the go around flow, and that is call up. So it's power up, pitch up, clean up, call up. That means let ATC or local airport traffic know that you're gonna go around and you're gonna try it again, no big deal. And if there was a fire-breathing white-tailed deer on the runway, well, best to let everybody know about that guy too. But all this talking truly happens at the end of the process. It's the fourth step because it's the least important part. As always, focus on the flying actions first. Get cleaned up, get your air speeds, then do your communicating. <sighs> okay, it was a little longer, there we go. But talk about a first episode back. A lot of meat on the bone. Just one of those topics that most flight instructors, including myself, would probably agree is at the very top of the list for practice and mastery when it comes to learning how to safely fly your Cirrus or any airplane for that matter, especially for those pilots that are new and are getting ready for, say, a first solo. You gotta get that smooth go around dialed in. So if it's been a while since you've practiced go arounds or you really are new to the world of flying for yourself? Well, schedule a date with your local CSIP who can test your go-around prowess by playing the role of, say, ATC, or maybe even that menacing 12-point buck. But as always, be sure to let us know what you're thinking in the comments, and make sure to help us spread all the aviation love by following, liking, and subscribing wherever you do your internet thing. And to really lay it on us, send questions, biting critiques, loving praise, to learning at cirrusaircraft.com. And flight fixers, don't forget, Learning is a lifestyle, and we will see you at the next fix.